In this video, I will work out a couple problems from the pre-algebra cumulative final review. Starting with number 29, the speed of a tsunami can be measured by the formula S squared equals 9.61 D. And the S is the speed of the wave in meters per second, and D is the depth of the ocean in meters where the earthquake occurs. What is the speed of the tsunami if an earthquake occurs at the depth of 540 meters, round to the nearest tenth? When doing any sort of problem that gives you a formula, always start by writing the formula. On the next line, you can substitute in the values that you're given in the story problem. So we know that it's 540 for the D value, so you can plug that in. Next, we get S squared equals... 9.61 times 540, which is 5,189.4. And because we have that as equal to S squared, we can undo that operation by taking the square root of each side. So S is equal to 72.0. If it says to round to the nearest tenth, you should include the tenth place value in your answer. So technically, number 29's answer should be 72.0 meters per second. The next problem I'm going to work out is number 34. Just to refresh your memory um, with working with exponents. Notice on 34 it says a cube's side measures 6x to the 6, y to the 8th inches. What's the volume? I like to draw pictures for many of my problems so I can get a visual of what I'm looking at. So I have a cube here that is 6x to the 6th y to the eighth on each side for length, width, and height. So volume is equal to length times width times height. So what I'm going to be doing is taking 6x to the sixth, y to the eighth to the third power. And if I wrote that out like I did in my picture here, I would have 6 times 6 times 6 for uh, the first part, or 6 to the third power. So you can visualize that here. I'm taking 6 to the third power, which is 216. If I had x to the 6 times x to the 6 times x to the 6, and I wrote out all of those x's, I would have a total of 18 x's. A shortcut to that, or a rule if you want to remember, is multiply the exponents when you have a power to a power. Oops, sorry about that. So power is 3 and exponent is 3. So that would be x to the 3rd. Sorry, x to the 18th. Again, y to the 8th to the 3rd. We're going to take that to the 3rd power as well. So we're going to multiply those exponents. It's going to be y to the 24th. So the final volume would be 216 x to the 18th y to the 24th. And since it's measured in inches, we'll go ahead and put cubic inches as our label. For number 35, again, we're working with exponents. And so we're finding the area of a triangle. Area of a triangle is equal to base times height divided by 2, or 1 half base times height. When you substitute in the values, 5x to the fourth for the base, 2x cubed for the height, we can simplify that by multiplying the exponents. So 5 times 2 is equal to 10. But we don't multiply the exponents when we are multiplying two monomials. That's just simply saying x, 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 x to the fourth times x to the third, x, x, x. And that's a total of x to the seventh because there are seven total. Yes, it is a rule, but if you write it out in expanded form, you'll see that there are seven x's. Similar to up here when we took x to the sixth to the third power, if we wrote all of that out, there would be 18 x's. So I know it can be confusing sometimes to remember the rules of exponents, but you can show why the rule works by writing out all of the, the variables here. So back to number 35, 5 times 2 is 10. We have x to the 7th, and when we divide it by 2, we can simplify 10 divided by 2, which is 5, and then it should be x to the 7th. So the final answer, 5x to the 7th. 
and there are no units. So technically we should put units and areas always measured in square units. That's all for this video. If you have specific problems that you want me to work out for the cumulative final, please let me know.